In this problem, we're asked to find the area of the surface obtained when rotating the given curve about the x-axis. Here we have a parametric curve defined by the equations x equals 45 cosine cubed of theta, y equals 45 sine cubed of theta, where theta ranges from 0 to pi over 2. Unlike our other parametric curves we've been looking at, our variable or our parameter in, the, in this particular curve is theta instead of t, but otherwise everything operates the same. The very first thing I want to do is, when considering the area of the surface, I possibly might want to go ahead and graph this thing using Desmos to get an idea. But the next thing I want to do is look and see if I have any formulas that I can use to find the surface area of a, a solid of revolution when that solid is being created by a parametric curve. So let me pull up a formula that I found in OpenStax that will help us deal with this type of problem. Provided that y is not 0, if we were to take a parametric curve and rotate it about the x-axis, the area of the resulting surface is given by the formula surface area equals 2 pi times the integral from a to b of y of t times the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, all in the square root. So for our problem, there are three key pieces that we're going to look at. We're going to look at y, we're going to have to find dx dt, and we're going to have to find dy dt. And remember, our variable, our parameter variable, is theta instead of t. So I can rethink of this formula as simply 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, y of theta, which is 45 sine cubed theta, times the square root of dx d theta squared, and I'll just write that as dx d theta squared, plus dy d theta squared d theta at the back end. This amounts to us finding two quantities, dx d theta and dy d theta. Now, x and y are both composition functions, and so we're going to need our chain rule. So I'm going to rewrite x as 45 cosine of theta to the third power, so that when I go to take dx d theta, I can employ the chain rule a little easier. So notice, 45 cosine cubed is equivalent to taking the excuse me, the derivative of 45 cosine cubed is equivalent to using the power rule on the outside. So that's going to be 45 times 3 times cosine of theta squared times the derivative of cosine theta, which is just negative sine theta. That tells me dx d theta is simply negative 135 cosine squared theta sine theta. Now let's take a look at y. y is a very similar function. It's 45 sine of theta cubed. And when I go to take the derivative of y with respect to theta, again, using the chain rule, that's going to give me 45 times 3 times the sine of theta squared times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. And that amounts to, when I simplify it, 135 sine squared cos theta. These are the values right here that I want to use to replace into my formula and square them. So dx d theta and dy d theta will get replaced. And let's go about making that substitution. All right. So what does this mean? This means that my surface area integral is just, and I might need to leave more space, but let's see how we can do here. That's equal to 2 pi times the integral and a 45. And you know what? Right away, I see that 45 coefficient, and I want to combine it. So I'm going to say that's equal to 90 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine cubed theta, and now I'm going to make that replacement, right? In place of dx d theta, I'm going to put negative 135 cosine squared theta sine theta, 
In place of dy d theta, I'm going to put 135 sine squared cosine theta squared d theta. And now I'm going to simplify. All right, so my surface area is equal to 90 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine cubed theta. And I think I'll do one more simplification step just to make it more clear, abundantly clear to everyone what's going on. I have 135 squared cosine to the fourth sine squared plus 135 squared. Oh, I need to erase this d theta here. Give myself more room. Sine to the fourth cosine squared d theta. To simplify underneath the square root, I notice I have a common factor of 135 squared. I also have a common factor of a sine squared and a cosine squared that I'm going to be able to take out from those two terms. So let's do that. We've got that the surface area is 90 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine cubed theta. I'm going to factor out underneath that square root 135 squared, cosine squared, and sine squared. And that's going to leave me with the first term here having an extra cosine squared and the second term here having an extra sine squared. But that's beautiful, isn't it? It's so cool because we know our good old Pythagorean identity, cosine squared plus sine squared is just one. One times anything is just anything. And so our surface area is just 90 pi times the integral from zero to pi over two sine cubed theta times the square root of 135 squared cosine squared sine squared or just 135 cosine theta sine theta. So close to completion right now, so close. I'm gonna combine, I've got my surface area is 90 pi times the integral from zero to pi over two. Putting the signs together, I have four of them. So I have, oh, slow down, Tina, slow down. You forgot your 135. Why don't we just pull that out front? So surface area is going to be 90 pi times 135. We'll deal with that in a minute. Sine to the fourth times the cosine d theta. This is a quick u substitution integral. Do you see that? You would let u be sine theta, du being cosine theta. Now how do we recognize that? Well, we recognize that because we have this composition going on, right? And the inside function, which is sine, has its derivative also appearing in that integral, cosine theta. So a quick u substitution, and you know what? I'm also going to change my limits at the same time. That means instead of pi over 2, I'm going to have the sine of pi over 2, or just 1 being my top limit. And my bottom, instead of being 0, is going to become the sine of 0, or just 0. And that's based on the fact that I'm going to be changing from theta limits into u limits. So I want to use my u function to help determine my top and bottom limits. So after a quick u substitution, what does that tell us? That tells us that the surface area is 90 pi times 135. And I'll leave it just like that in case we're going to cancel some things. Might be easier keeping things like that. Times the integral from 0 to 1, that's my new u limits, of u to the fourth du. Ha! So close. Let's take the antiderivative. We've got 90 pi times 135 times 1 fifth u to the fifth from 0 to 1. 
Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, we plug the one in, that gives us 90 pi times 135 times one fifth times one to the fifth minus, and when we plug in zero, that just gives us zero. I can cancel that five with the 90 and giving me 16. And when I take with the calculator and I pull out the 16, excuse me, and when I take a calculator and multiply 16 times 135, that's giving me 2,160 pi square units being my surface area. That's it. Whew, that was a lot of work. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help. The key, and I'll just go back, the key is at the very beginning making sure you get a formula to help you with this problem.